This is the Asus Crosshair 7 Hero. It is the next generation X470 AMD or M4 motherboard for the Ryzen lineup. Now, it, as with all the other X470 boards, it is backwards compatible with the original 1000 series Ryzen chips, as well as the new Ryzen 2000 series chips. So whatever Ryzen chip you want to throw in this, it will work just fine. So let's start off with a tour of the board. Of course, you have the AM4 socket in the middle and the standard backplate and mounting hardware. You have four DDR4 RAM DIMM slots with this weird sort of metal band or silver band in the middle that uh, in theory means that they're sort of a reinforced slot, although I don't think too many people have had a problem with that. You do still have the eight and four pin CPU power connectors to deliver as much power as is physically capable to deliver to these chips. And of course, you have uh, multiple sets of fan headers as well as RGB headers for both RGB uh, kind of uh, common cathode standard style and your digital RGB headers uh, up the top right next to your debug LED and your start and reset buttons. Just next to the 24 pin is actually where your voltage checkpoints are. This is where you can hook up a multimeter to the ground pin here and then the uh, any of the uh, positive pins to measure the voltage at those specific locations on a hardware kind of external basis rather than trying to rely on software and the internal voltage monitoring on the board. This is great for you know your high-end high overclockers although I would mention that as far as I can tell and I've spoke to, to people like Wendell from Level 1 Techs and a number of other people who've been testing these Ryzen CPUs, most of them can't get more than 4.3 gigahertz which is actually fairly stock at least for the 2700X so just bear that in mind that unless you get a very specific chip or you're going for you know single core overclocks you're likely not going to get too much more than that. Now just below the 24 pin you have the USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel header for Type C's although I haven't really seen any of these actually on cases so I guess it's a little bit chicken and egg and nice to see that they are on motherboards for future cases to support them and otherwise uh, just on the touch of RGB headers you do actually have a second set down at the bottom right of the board again your sort of analog and digital RGB headers available you also have a couple of temp sensors and a water pump uh, water flow sensor which you can hook directly to the board for your high-end you know, sort of very nice systems if you want to uh, water cool them and have more temperature sensors for storage connectivity you have six SATA ports and two M.2 slots. The top one is directly connected to the CPU and has what looks like a block of brushed aluminium sort of painted on top of it um, as a heatsink. I would mention that this one isn't quite as nice as the Gigabyte ones that have some actual sort of thin arrangements which might actually catch some air and allow for heat, uh, heat sinking rather than heat soaking but it's still nice that it is uh, kind of an option available. Uh, it's a 2280 slot whereas the bottom slot is a 22100 so you can fit a longer SSD in there and it does actually have a little support which is always nice to see as well. In terms of PCIe connectivity you have two x16 slots which are reinforced and are actually labeled on the board as directly connected to the CPU. The, the top one is x16 and the middle uh, x16 length slot is an x8 electrically and then on the bottom you have what looks like an x8 electrically although it will be connected through the chipset so we'll be running an x4 anyway and you also have two x1 slots one of which is an open back which is always kind of nice to see. I would also mention while we're running through the connectors on the board that this one has seven PWM fan headers. That's something that a lot of people like to know. So there you go, seven total, which is kind of crazy, but still, uh, you know, a fair, fair number. Now the audio connection on the board is the Supreme Effects Audio, which I believe still uses a Realtek uh, chip anyway. But I would mention that this is actually one of the only boards that still actually has the split PCB audio. It's not quite as defined as some of the older ones, but it still is a full split audio PCB all the way around, which is kind of interesting as literally every other board seems to have either mostly or entirely done away with it. So I wonder if that is uh, something that Asus kind of wants to market to or whether it actually does make a difference in their testing versus other people's. I'd, I'd be interested to know if uh, you are an expert in audio, if, you see, uh, if you've seen any difference in that in the comments down below. And of course we need to take a look at the rear AO. So this one is actually really pretty impressive. This has the most amount of USB ports possible that I can even imagine. You have eight USB 2 ports, two USB 2 ports. You also have USB Type-C and 3.1 Gen 2, which is always nice to see and a lot of connectivity there. You also have uh, clear CMOS and power buttons on the back. You also have your Wi-Fi antennas, your Gigabit Ethernet, and you have your 7.1 audio with SPDIF, which makes this a very impressive rear IO. And of course, the built-in IO shield as well, which actually I find makes it more difficult to install than just a standard IO shield. But I suppose that it's nice that it's a little bit easier sometimes 
times depending on how you put it in so it's there if you need it. Now jumping into the BIOS as with all of the Asus motherboards they're basically the same BIOSes. You have a few extra settings on this one compared to say an Intel one with the AMD CBS settings which lets you set things like custom P states for if you really want to go into advanced overclocking so that's obviously quite nice to see. The overall layout for the board is uh, or the BIOS is pretty nice with obviously uh, most of your things split up into individual tabs and a tools tab for stuff like your fan uh, monitoring and fan uh, kind of profiling software so that's always uh, nice to see. When it comes to overclocking the board the board literally has a sub menu called tweakers paradise where you can go through and change literally every uh, you know voltage every timing every setting you can imagine under the sun it is there for you to check out so if you're interested in really detailed overclocking feel free to go through that but otherwise if you're a beginner or a basic overclocker everything is on a nice and simple page and you can very easily jump through even their uh, you know sort of 4 gigahertz profile their gamer profile and all that sort of stuff so uh, there's a fairly easy way to go about it uh, for the, the kind of basic users and a lot of advanced options too in terms of overclocking results I was pretty impressed with the board now uh, as I said these chips don't seem to overclock much more past their boost clocks so I wouldn't be uh, at least personally anyway trying to do a lot of uh, you know high multi-core overclocks although these are fairly early chips so as the process now gets refined you might find that your consumer chips that you pick up might actually be able to overclock a little bit more so you might be able to get 4.4 4.5 gigahertz all cores but that's kind of speculation at this point um, and I would mention that uh, the board itself is more than capable of handling it the VRM temperatures were incredibly cool especially with the heat pipe design that they've got there uh, and otherwise there was no other issues like V-Drip or anything else so I'm really impressed with the board in terms of its capability to handle overclocks even if the chips can't. So there you go my experience of the board has been pretty positive it's obviously a very stylish board with lots of LEDs and lots of LED headers for you so that's obviously nice if you, you fancy that and you can obviously turn them off if you want to otherwise uh, the overall software experience with it was pretty good the, the BIOS is relatively well laid out it's not my favorite overall layout but it's still very usable very easy to access and I'd be perfectly happy using one considering that I use the uh, Crosshair 6 Hero personally in my desk build um, so yeah it's a, it's definitely a decent board it's got a lot of connectivity a lot of options and overall I'm pretty impressed with it before we jump into the scoring I'd love to hear your thoughts about the board in the comments down below is this your next dream board or is this you know far too expensive is this you know something you're not interested in are you you know sticking with your current one I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below so for the scoring because this is a pretty premium board it's going to be a four for five money in terms of performance though it has to be a five and functionality I think especially with that really impressive rear IO I'm actually going to go with a five here. In terms of styling, they've done a really nice job, so it's going to be a 5, and in terms of the Titan BB score, it's going to be a 5 and a gold award. It's an incredibly impressive motherboard. I highly recommend it if you're interested in a X470 motherboard, especially from the Asus brand, and otherwise, that is pretty much that. If you want to check out the board, especially check out pricing when and where you watch this, take a look at the link in the description down below. That will take you to the local Amazon store. You can also support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday basis by taking a look at the links in the description down below the patreon link we can support you directly or the amazon and overclock gate affiliate links which also massively help me out and keep the, the lights on and me filming these videos so please use those when you can you can also check out the other videos over here if you're new to the channel feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and otherwise that is pretty much it so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video